Okay, so first of all, welcome to my channel. Um, if you know me, then thank you for <laughs> watching this video. And if you don't, um, my name's Jade. Uh, I'm probably going to be wearing my hair like this a lot, and it's just because I'm in the process of... Not, there's nothing wrong with hair like this, but I just mean um, if it's quite samey, it's because I'm trying to find a style where I'm basically not using heat. I just thought this would be a good video to do. Well, also the fact is it's half past 11 at night and I just wanted to film something that was quite chatty and easy to, to do and I've got quite a lot of ideas so I thought this would be a good one and also it kind of ties in with maybe a bit why I'm starting this channel and like the kind of knowledge I've got and I also wanted to say in no means is this me saying I know all about the fashion industry and like my opinions are necessarily right but I do feel like I've done quite a lot of bits and bobs and I can kind of um, I wish I I wish I'd saw a video maybe prior to um, this my kind of process throughout what I've been doing, if that makes any sense. So yeah, like if you found me because you've just searched up how to get into the fashion industry or tips and tricks or whatever or university, then you know I hope that this kind of helps you. Um, and if you do have any questions, please like feel free to DM me or just comment below and I can, you know, if there's anything else or if there's anything I've missed out then please let me know, yeah. So anyway, um, I decided to go around down the route of going to university and I really wanted to address that I really don't think that you have to, necessarily have to go to uni. For, for most things actually, I think there's a lot of pressure to feel like you have to go. And it's not that I don't think university isn't valuable, it's, it's fantastic. Um, in certain ways and it depends where you go it's very it's like a job really you don't know what you're going to get until you get into it so i'll start off actually at school um because i was thinking about this recently study textiles in school like obviously like you pick different subjects and stuff but i i did pick textiles um i can't remember much about that but i remember um in school there was this teacher if anyone from Fitzalan's watching, I can't remember the name of this teacher, but if he was in the fashion textiles class, um, you'll remember that she was very like, she was. I think she literally thought she was from the Devil Wears Prada. I then went on to choose um, fashion clothing at, um, in college in Cardiff. Um, I'm not sure what it's like now, I actually don't know, I'm guessing that course is still running. Um, and it was a good course because it also incorporated art into it. So yeah, if you're watching, if you're from Cardiff and you're younger, definitely check that out. I think I hadn't, I didn't know that it was possible to do um, to do fashion in Cardiff um, at college. I was going to do different subjects. I was going to pick a few, and when I found that, I literally was like, I'm gonna have to go with it. It was a B Tech clothing. Um, course and I did learn quite a lot um, so we had like life drawing classes and I really felt like throughout that time my drawing got better now it's awful <laughs> but I really loved um, life drawing which is something actually um, um, oh this video is probably going to be so long um, so yeah we did art I remember we did sewing and we did like different sewing um, skills like how to from like how to sew a button on which I knew anyway to like um, to underlocking, that's it. The course for, I guess, finding your feet. Like, my friend went on to do design, and then I think different people then, you know, stuck to doing art, and my one friend's doing makeup, my one friend's doing beauty. Like, I feel, feel like everyone was creative, um, and some people, everyone had the different skills, and it was really nice that we were able to explore that. One project we did, window display, um, which made me think I might even want to go into that um, and on that project we collaborated and we did like some people did they made clothes and then some people were on the window display team and it just kind of we collaborated together. I really did enjoy like learning about sewing and it's something I would like to do in my free time for sure but I just felt like my skills were better suited to kind of the act of bringing things together if that makes sense. Just working towards a brief I really enjoyed and I like sewing, but pattern cutting was just like, ugh, you know. Even though I was kind of feeling like I kind of knew what I wanted to do, I still wanted to keep my options open, and I definitely, I felt like I wanted to learn more about photography and more about like Photoshop and InDesign. Like, it was like in college as well. I think it was like a good balance of being kind of 
definitely having classes and being taught but then also we wasn't being taught photoshop and things like that and I kind of thought that I'd be taught more in uni but defi I definitely wasn't um, and definitely wasn't taught about photography. Uni's very like, I would, in my uni I went to UCA in Epsom which is the University for the Creative Arts. Um, they gave you a brief and I, I, I think a lot of people know this but you, you're given a brief and then you're told to go off and do it and you do work um, again in teams and things like that but they're kind of just marking your work and they're there to like support you it was good because the tutors that we had they were all at industry level I felt like when I went to university I didn't have a clue about the fashion industry and I think that's definitely what I took out of it as I've already said you don't necessarily have to go to uni to probably do most um, most jobs and most careers um, I think like there's certain things like definitely doctors and things like that but I feel like creative subjects it's definitely open to your interpretation and I think I gained a lot more from actually going out to do work experience but I, I also I didn't actually know uh, like I said about the fashion industry and I learned through what's that thing that like unwritten unwritten curriculum so like from people you meet. Let me know if you would like me to do a video on just like university tips and life because I think that's a whole separate subject. If I had known maybe maybe I would have just gone straight into work experience and built up that way but maybe some of the work experience I got was through the kind of fact I was in university, I don't know. Uh, as I mentioned I kind of um, was interested in window display um, and in college they actually asked us to do work experience so I did do um, work experience briefly um, doing window display at Urban Outfitters in Cardiff. Um, this was like years ago. Um, but I just want to say as well, like, I think I never, th even then, obviously it was only because we were pushed to do it, I think it's great to do work experience and at the end of the day, um, that company or that person is getting a free helper or a free employee. So, you know, they're teaching you and you're getting that, but then same way, they're also getting something and I think you've got to, you've got to remember that as well, like definitely, because like, people will, not, not this um, particular one, but I think people will kind of take the mick a little bit and you need to know when to kind of draw a line because, yes, you are wanting to be a, a sponge and absorb stuff, at the end of the day, you're working for free as well, so that's something to know. Um, and I think you need to know when to move on and just go like also like you can go to the next place even if it's the same experience that was in um, window display you you could go somewhere else and get that on your CV as well rather than stay in there for a year but also I think a lot of people do they do work experience and they do it for like say a year and then out at the end of it because they've been there so long they do get a job out of it so it's just like it's hard to know whether to stay and potentially get work or not, but then maybe it's just something that I probably should have just asked maybe a bit more. And also as well, it's hard to know sometimes how much money, I know it sounds bad to talk about money, but how much money you'll get out, out of things at the end of it. So you need to do your research because you could be waiting for like a year and then you're like, oh, that's how much money is not really going to be worth all the kind of uh, free work I've done to then be on that salary or to then, I don't know, if that makes any sense. Apart from window display, I did a little bit of PR, but then I was kind of offered a different experience, so I left the PR for that. But through styling, I I saw a lot of, it, like a lot of things tying together, so I feel like I've got kind of a bit of understanding of PR. Not in depthly, but I know people who've done PR work experience or like worked in PR and stuff, so... Um, what I can say about PR is I've heard that it's really fun um, and, you know, it's good, like, events, you get to go to events, you get to, like, um, fashion week is really fun and um, you get, like, obviously, if you don't know what PR is, it's kind of, like, it's dressing people for events. Um, usually the items are on loan, I'm pretty sure they're all on loan, um, so it's kind of samples and they go out and then they come back in. Um, so I kind of have done a little bit of that as well actually when I work for a magazine. Um, so anyway, so the clothes go out and then you know you need to get them back in, so they're on loan. Um, so as a stylist or a stylist assistant, um, you get to go and pick up 
up stuff from PRs to lend for like photo shoots, for music videos, um, for work that's usually like commission. It's very hard to get clothes on loan just because you want to build your portfolio, which is a difficulty that I felt. So when you're starting out um, as, a, as a stylist and building your portfolio, you literally have to just buy stuff and send it back. Like, unless you're like loaded or I don't know, you, you've got a job to pay. But it's like you're paying for clothes that then are not going to be used after because you're paying for clothes to fit your model. I've, I've, I've seen some really people be really rude and it actually put me off um, approaching them to try and get work experience for them. Um, I have to say pretty much all of the people I've done work experience for have, have treated me well and I've heard some horror stories and also yeah like I said you have to know you have to kind of get a bit of a, like a backbone because sometimes people do talk to you like crap um, and they forget that you are working for them for free you're putting your time in and, and you're a person too and yeah so I worked for a couple of magazines, um, one of them, I don't know if I need to say like certain names, but one of them was under Vogue, Vogue House, so it was in Vogue, but it was in that building, um, so there's like quite a few magazines that go under Vogue House, and that was great. Through that I did a bit of PR, I guess, because it was a fashion, as a, I guess it's like, is it called Fashion Assistant? Yeah, or you kind of do a bit of PR, I guess, because you're, you are reaching out to PR agencies, but to loan their clothes, and like you have to like, check in the clothes and like make sure everything goes back so it's kind of like the op on the opposite end but you're like tracking what's in and out of coming into the magazine and it's it is quite stressful because you know there's different shoots going on there's different stylists or um i forget the term but i guess fashion directors or things like that that uh, they might be going away to like America to and taking the clothes with them and um, also like you need to get the clothes in by a certain time so that you know it's in time for the shoot you've got to reach out you've got to like send like these emails explaining what it is and like I said before PR agencies are very reluctant to give you anything unless the, they work with brands to get their products featured not to just be like in a portfolio so it is so difficult if you're starting out as a stylist to just, yeah, to get good clothes. It's just like, ha like literally, it would blow my mind. Like, how am I meant to make and compete with that when I'm a student? You don't have much money. So, yeah, I would just get, like, high street. And I guess, like, if I persevered, you could then, you know, use and utilise different brands. Or you There's a lot of magazines as well that will feature your work. Um... So, like you don't, you wouldn't get paid, but it's exposure. So a lot of it on that side of styling is about exposure. Um, so I would say collaborate definitely, especially like say you're in uni or um, you know you just you decided you want to be a stylist. You can collaborate with other people who are photographers who are also trying to work on their portfolio. Same way models. I used to contact model agencies saying you know I'm doing this shoot and um, basically they all basically people who are also with um building the portfolio so that's makeup artists models photographers um and hairstylists but a lot of makeup artists and hairstylists do both it's so hard to kind of keep a flow into this thing because it's so there's so many compartments to it it's actually told by some stylists that you know maybe that's not always the best option and it's it's competitive as well obviously um, and you know maybe styling freelance was something to think about and so yeah um, I think my friend Gabby actually hi Gabby if you're watching I don't know if you are um, she put me in touch with um, a stylist who was actually starting out she was actually assisting another stylist so I kind of started assisting her and then through that I then started assisting kind of like the head stylist if you like and then as that other person kind of was getting into her own I was kind of assisting her with more of her shoots or like on the bigger jobs we'd, we'd assist together and um, yeah so I kind of learned through that kind of how she was building it. With her I assisted for another job um, with, it was a really big job um, which there was actually four of us assisting including the one that I'd also assisted before um, and it was like that stylist's main assistant so 
she was actually employed, or both of those two girls were employed by the other stylist to be their assistant. Now that's, I find to be quite rare. A lot of the times they kind of get in different people and again, like, because you can kind of, um, as an extra pair of hands and things like that. But there is the option of kind of getting to be someone's stylist assistant full time. Um, so if you do want to be a freelance stylist, or a stylist in any way and you know that's your path, yeah, maybe it is worth kind of, you know, building up that way and I think definitely through circles you can, it's like about, you know when they say it's like about who you know, not necessarily what you know, I think that's definitely the case in fashion, 100%. Um, there's a lot of people I've seen that like, you know, just kind of landed like a really good job and it's through who they know and I, that again is that's in most, um, in most sectors, in most fields, um, God, I could go on forever about this subject. I didn't. Uh, this is going to be a really long video. So yeah, I'll move on. Um, but what I'll say is also from that, I have kind of worked. I've worked backstage at Fashion Week um, with that stylist, and also um, I've just been there a few times actually, like for different things. Um, and fashion week, I'd say, is really fun. Um, it's really good to just kind of see all these different people. What I loved, I've been to quite a few different fashion shows. I've been lucky enough to go. Um, that I really love seeing the different designers, but I really love seeing the bedding designers. It's just amazing to see. It, re it really is. Um, so yeah. So. Some of the ways you can kind of go to Fashion Week is working backstage. Um, so I did this with the stylist I mentioned, dressing the models, that was really fun. Um, I've also gone along just for um, stylists, they had like tickets and they sent me along. Um, and I've been, um, what else did I do? Oh, and I also wrote for, uh, for a magazine. Um, again, you know, if you want some further advice, I'll tell you, but I just didn't want to like, say all these different names of people and places and stuff um, but yeah that was really good I'm really not a writer so that got like that was probably the most challenging because I remember coming home having meltdowns and looking at other people's writing thinking how on earth am I going to do it but luckily I had a good friend who had also done that and she really helped me shout out to Shauna um, and yeah Again, it's it's good to push yourself outside your comfort zone and know that you can do it. Like at the end, I was really proud of of that um, of those right of those write ups. I think I did about four different ones. Um, so yes, that's another way. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I really wanted to do buy in. Um, I, I really had this idea of doing buy in. Um, and again, like look, do your own research. But um, with buy in. Um, Starting out is really not a lot of money, but I feel like the money goes up year after year and you can kind of like within five years you could not necessarily be at the top, but it's like a smoother path. So it's kind of like starting off low, but then the money like jumps up and it's like it is a good path. It's just really hard to get into. So I think maybe with buying, I'd say maybe that's probably when there would be beneficial to do a course. Um, I tried to, to apply to loads of buying experience when I was at uni. Um, I never, I never actually got one, um, and I also then applied for buying jobs after uni, and I thought because I have fashion promotion um, as my course, it it would kind of, it would kind of be okay. But fashion promotion doesn't cover buying. Um, but what I had kind of heard about buying is it's quite analytical, and there's also merchandising. So kind of like maybe look up the two. The, the difference of the two. Um, with buying as well, I had this impression of like, yeah, be, go and do buying and then you get to travel. Um, again, it's kind of like a path. You don't, like, you start off as like um, a buyer's clerk or buyer's admin assistant and then you have to like go through the journey. <laughs> go through the journey. Um, you have to, yeah, build your way up. And then once you are like, um, senior buyer or, you know, whatever, one of those kind of higher up ones, then you'll be the one travelling around. It, it did interest me and I would love to have done um, work experience in it, so I can't really talk about that that much. But I think it's a great career path, I just think a lot of people I've heard, like they can't finally get into it and then maybe it's not what they thought and it's not, 
it's not just like, yeah, you get to go around picking stuff and buying. No, it's like it's more administrative and more um, analytical at first, and then kind of those things come after. Um, but I have met people who have really loved it as well, and yeah. So then, yeah, like my last kind of work experiences were kind of assistant stylist, as I mentioned, um, and then. As I mentioned with the buy-in, I kind of like the idea of travelling. Um, so after I kind of had finished uni, I was kind of thinking about like what I wanted to do, and I was like, oh, the styling like is great, and I love it, and I felt like I was probably like on the cusp of getting somewhere just as like a freelance stylist. Oh, and I also did um, styling assistant in a studio at e-commerce. I loved that. I loved working in a studio, and that's something that I would probably think about doing again. Um, what I loved about styling um, is the team, like is working with a team so like different people's different talents coming together like is just something that I I just love. Just everyone's good energy and like it's just like wow like and you, you learn things as well like there's certain creams and stuff I've learned from like makeup artists so like what's the best foundation I'd be there like asking them all different things um, I'm really interested in photography as well but I just thought uh, that's a whole different world and like just kind of stick to this but I would love to learn more about the camera but I would, I would get mucked in I'd be there with the um what's that th with the light thing like beaming lights onto models like I'd be doing all, all sorts and like what you got to do is just jump in I'm really sorry if this is all over the place but it's literally the hardest video to film because I've just it's just like unleashed all this like stuff about well it's basically like yeah my yeah life so the last um, work experience I'll talk about, or maybe sector, um, is events. I only did a couple, um, again, like as work experience, um, but it's something that I thought, like, I, I really enjoy events, so I, I love the idea of like, go to events and things like that, and um, just being in the world. Um, so I did an event, there was like a fashion week retreat, and like all these different people came, and again, that was fun, because of, Again, like as, as you go along, like you learn about different brands, like not even necessarily just fashion brands, but like diff again, like different makeup, and um, you had like you get little goodie bags and things like that. So then I don't know, you get you get to just basically talk to as many people as you can. And when I think of that, I think of every place. I've kind of like got them all on like LinkedIn or like Instagram or like I don't know whatever. There's people you can say in touch with, and like. It's not necessarily that they're doing the same thing as you or what you want to do, but, you know, then, if you need a makeup artist for your shoot or whatever, you know of someone. Yeah, like, just from talking to people, like, you just learn so much. Like, I just, that's why I just find work experience so valuable. Um, again, even that, like, just getting mucked in. Like, I remember, like, I was doing DIY, like, building this, like, these... Um, building these tables and stuff for this event and like spray painting like a bike and stuff and like just getting mucked in and it's all really good fun and it's really beneficial and again like just making the contacts like going to like different parties like uh, yeah London's a really great city especially to study and to do work experience with fashion like I really would recommend that so that was one of the events and then like I said there was like fashion week events I think there was like there was like a charity fashion event I did um where again getting mucked in I was like modelling some of their clothes, like walking around like with all these different people, um, trying to raise money. Um, that was really good. Again, I went to a good party after that. Anyway, I won't go into that too much, but I'm just trying to show you that there's quite a lot of different work experience you can do. And I think it's really good to do that, especially if you don't know what you're going to do. And you can kind of translate this to anything. I guess like music, like, you know, go and try and um, work as a runner. I don't know if you can do that in a music studio, but like, say you want to work for like, you want to be a director, like you go and be a runner and you try and do different things, like, anything creative, there's work experience you can do, so it's like, do that, like, I think it's so hard when you're young as well to know what to do, so like, it's just so, uh, I, can't, I can't recommend work experience enough, like, your parents, friends, like, is anyone doing something similar to what you want to do? Because I realised that I love styling the most, but as I said, I just didn't want to struggle and not have any money anymore and I came across this job as a personal shopping assistant. It was a fantastic experience and I think at the time I didn't realise how much I actually gained from it. Like, I really did and I'm glad, I think sometimes as well in life, at the time it's really stressful or you really don't think you're gaining as much from it as you actually are and I've just had the realisation now where I just think, 
that actually did so much for me and I am grateful that I did that. I just got a bit emotional there. I think I'm just getting emotional in quarantine. I found a job as a personal shopping assistant and I was like, oh great, personal shopping. Basically I see pers it's kind of, and I still do personal shopping now by the way. Um personal shopping is basically styling's less creative sister. That's how I that's how I describe it. Um because you do assist people it's also like it's also sales which I didn't really think of before I went into that through that I gained so much knowledge about brands like I had no I, I thought I knew some brands before like I had no idea Um, you know everyone knows like the big brands like Chanel and Gucci and like Louis Vuitton and stuff but there's so many brands that are like really well known in the fashion industry but not known to like maybe like just a general public um, so it was great to like gain brand knowledge, we had like brand trainings and also um, what I liked about working in the store was that again you got a connection. <sighs> also I don't, I don't want to say too much but like being an assistant is really hard as well because obviously you're assisting someone else's business so you know in the end I just I wanted to be doing my like in personal shopping as well they, they see it as kind of like your own little businesses especially if you work for a company so I just I really wanted to get into the next step and be doing my own business and like know where I was and you know my own clients and things like that because it was stressful just kind of like not always knowing what was going on behind the scenes and things like that um but yeah I assisted different people in my time there like some people for different days some um some people long term as well and um, you know you learn from different people and their different styles and the way they do the business and things like that so that was great um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can say from there yeah like how just like being around high profile people um, being in like high pressure which you get from most jobs really and now I'll bring you to my current role which is basically a personal shopper and it's mainly online because my clients are not in the UK um, however the role is a bit different it's actually called concierge which you can look into there's like I think there's quite a few companies doing it um, but it was quite a new role and I've just been kind of helping to like steer that and like yeah but basically essentially it's an online personal shopper depends where your clients are from because a lot of companies I know, like they have like a showroom or, you know, like I said, I work for Harrods in store. Um, the company now I work for has been more niche and they've got a showroom. So if my clients are in, in the UK, I get them to come in. Um, I don't want to like bore you too much with like that side and be like, oh, my clients. But um, yeah, but a lot of people that I work with, they do have, their clients are in the UK and they see them a lot more. It just depends. Um, but... Yeah, I'm also, I'm basically doing like, in this role, like I've learned how to like use Photoshop more. I learned to kind of along the way in like bits and bobs in uni. Um, but I definitely say like the people who um, I worked with really helped me learn more about Photoshop. And like, I'm not the best. We have a content team. <laughs> the work is amazing. It's so good. And that's another thing that you can do in, in, um, in the fashion industry as well is is work is um be on a content team um so you could do like say you did like a graphic design course or in my case on fashion motion imagery was the section that i could have um chose to do more projects in and things like that um which my friend actually did and she works for a graphic design company so there we go my tea's probably gone cold because i've been talking too lot too much so it's been kind of taking what I knew from being in front of clients more so. I guess it was also a lot to do online as well and sending things out. But now, you know, it's kind of like customer care meets uh, marketing meets personal shopper, I would say. Um, and it's, yeah, it's definitely like showing me a lot of skills and it's, that's, you know, it's a really... Um, great job to be in and it's very flexible as well is what, what I love about it Um also I get my weekends and things like that so you know it's been like a long process to get to where I am now and as I've said at the beginning um, 
you know, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Like, there's, I've got lots of other ideas and things I want to do. But I just, I just felt like it was important to, like, make this video because I think you could learn from other people's experiences. And as I've mentioned about a million times, work experience is, like, the best thing you could ever do. Um, and even though, yeah, you are working for free and stuff, like, it's just so valuable. So if you can, I would say start the earlier the better. Um, like obviously you start doing work experience in school, don't you? So just figure it out. But I just didn't think at the time to continue doing work experience. And like even in my first year, first year also at university is actually so relaxed. I don't think a lot of people realise like it's so relaxed and I probably shouldn't tell you that. But the first year I think in most courses don't actually count towards you. You have to pass it, but that year is like get pass it and then year two and year three is what counts for your final grade don't quote me on that because i might be wrong in certain courses but i'm pretty sure everyone i've spoken to that's how it worked um so in that time also like the projects are not hard like that's the time to be doing your work experience like do that also you know you've got your grant and things like that and like you could work and like get more money but like I felt like I had enough money to get by in what I had from the loan and grant. Some people get less, so I get that. But you could still, like, you could balance, like, having a job. And, but what I'm trying to say is having that balance between doing your subject and, um, you know, having something completely different. And for me, like, I really enjoy fashion and things like that, but I don't always feel like I'm giving back. Where I hope that's given... Um, a good general knowledge of what I know of the different areas. I mean, like, there's obviously diff there's like more areas, but like those are the ones that have come to my head right now. Um, so yeah. Also, yeah, I think you've got to decide as well, like whether you kind of I'm gonna put it straight. Like for me, it was kind of like money versus creativity. And in this job, I've got to be fair, I do have a lot of creative freedom. So I've kind of like yeah, it's, it is really good in that respect. Um, so yeah but in the future i would like to do more photo shoots and things like that and um expand in that way it's just a it's just like they're just different it's just different paths um but yeah there's pros and cons to everything is what i would say um but yeah i really enjoyed filming that and i hope that it gave a good a good as i said a good overview if you do have any questions please feel free to message me and i just want to say as well just in general like if you're starting out in any field like just don't put pressure on yourself because everything does start like even me talking through every like different random thing i did i went off on tangents and, and all sorts and it's just like you figure it out in the end and i just think it's so important to do what you love like i've been told loads of times to like stay in a job because oh it looks bad on your cv no if you hate that job what is your life like like you're young yes and you've got loads of time to figure it out but if you are miserable in a job leave like there's so many more jobs that could be far more fun like i had some of the best times working in just random jobs and i'm i'm not gonna i, I won't go into that because it's just it's not really relevant to this video but i mean like i had far more fun working in some jobs that like completely wasn't what i wanted to do long term than i did in like just places i just wasn't really appreciated and things like that so i just wanted to put that out there as well um so yeah um i hope i did i hope i did okay and i hope i didn't bore you to death but if you are interested in the fashion industry like that's what I can say and that's what I can share with you um, please give you the video a thumbs up um, and subscribe if you if you wouldn't mind that really help me out and also share in my channel like I said it's one of my first videos so um, every little help so yeah. thank you so much for watching um, I hope this is not really long, I'm going to have to go and edit this now, so yeah, I'm going to stop here before it's like 10 hours long. Um, so yeah, whatever you're doing, have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.